On today's program, we'll be heading due south from Adelaide, the capital of South Australia, and heading along the magnificent Flurio Peninsula to Kangaroo Island. Just outside of the city, we pass one of Australia's most famous wine regions, McLaren Vale. Some of the world's most famous wines come from this region. We stop off at Tapestry Wines for a small taste at the cellar door. And while we're here, we're going to cook up some seafood. Now, what are we doing today? We're going to cook mm. that beautiful farm barra money that we got from, from Road Barra down in the southeast from Australia's largest onshore barra money farm. So we're just going to score it mm -hmm. three times either size. Then we're going to wrap it up in bark and use native lines, the traditional way that the Aborigines used to cook the fish in the tropical north. This is a desert lime and it's so astringent. It's just oh, unbelievable. And this is a sunrise lime. So we're going to slice that in half. And this is a sunset lime. Now, all of these products are available in the, your local supermarket. They really are fantastic. And Michael, you've just got the normal lime there. You've given yes, me. Yes, just give a bit of wash because there's not a lot of juice mm -hmm. in here. And just to, to mix, and also I'm going to put them inside. And if you can get me some lemon myrtle leaf, Michael. Yeah, you know, lemon myrtle leaf. So we're just squeezing. You just the, tear it. Yes. So we're just mm. squeezing out the fruit and going to rub it all over the fish. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put that inside the fish. Just tear it a little bit to let that lemon That's lovely. flavour come out. And there. these, all these products are red ochre, who developed all these lovely bush tucker flavours. Mm -hmm. So, Michael, we're going to wrap the fish up and we're going to tie it. So, there's your fish. And we're going to put it into our cooker. As I said, either we're going to steam it with uh, Sauvignon Blanc or you can put it in the oven for about 15 or 20 minutes. <gasps> uh, it has cooked. And the bark preserves the flavours mm. and acts as, as a cooker. That's as a really steamer. hot, isn't it? It's very hot. And oh. there's our barramundi. Michael, look at that. Now, Michael, the barramundi we just had was fantastic, but there's a, is there another way we can cook it? Why don't we do it Thai style and mm. use all those lovely Thai flavours that we oh. use in Tom Young? Beautiful. So, again, just score the fish, mm. about four cuts either size, to allow all the marinade and those flavours to infuse. Also, you can use them as cheat holes. So, inside the cavity, Mike, if you can fill it up. We'll tear up these, they're cafe lime them. leaves, which are yep. very, very pungent. Some, some coriander, cori there, of course. And, uh, and what about some chilies? Yeah, and while you're doing that, Michael, what we're going to steam it in, we've got some homemade chicken stock here. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some, some uh, chardonnay and then a bit of uh, fish sauce, which is mm, pungent in flavour. And what's this? We're going to use Tom Young paste. Mm. <laughs> which gives us all that chilli flavour. Mm. Shall I put another chilli in? I would put another chilli okay. in. OK, I'll just slice a little slice yep. down there, just so the seeds won't come out. We'll just tuck him in there. Sure. Poor little fellow. Now, what in are we going to do? Another one there, one other couple. Good. I'm going to make a base here with mm -hmm. coriander, and some spring onions. What about some lemongrass? And some lemongrass. And we're going to put the fish on top. And, and what about some galanga? Yes, and if you can... That's like a ginger. It is. I don't know if you can see those slices going in there. And some fresh lime juice on the top, Michael. Yep, look at that. Absolutely. We use Australian limes, and again, a bit of a chilli there. This is going to be one hot fish. One little hot fish. <laughs> and we're just going to cover it up. And again, 15 or 20 minutes. That's how long it should take. Look at that. And there you are. Michael. There's another version of Robara Barramundi mm. in lovely Thai flavours. Michael, we've cooked Barramundi Australian way, <laughs> Thai way, but what about showing me how to fillet one? I'll do that for you, Mike. Then we can just do a very simple recipe. Mm -hmm. I'll cook the fish. How about you cook the greens? Mm. So the first cut, we, we'll do it on the bone, a very sharp knife. You come along the back, what we call the dorsal fin, and about halfway through, you push your knife through, and then you navigate your knife Mm. Over the rib cage. Is that satellite navigation? It could be cheap here. Norm normal old Greek fashion. There's one fillet. Look at that. Okay. And all we're going to do here, we've got some sea salt, black cracked pepper, we're just going to mm -hmm. coat them in this non stick pan. Just take off the excess. Mm -hmm. And that'll probably take a couple of minutes. We're only going to turn over our fish once. So skin side down first. There's the barramundi fillets already plated. About three minutes they cook totally. And now the bok choy person. Move over, Rover. Yes. This is my turn. Now, this is bok choy. Oh. We're going to leave a little bit of the oil in there. Now we need chardonnay, please. Yes, sir. How and much, now, sir? Thank you. Keep going. Beautiful. Okay. Yes. A little bit of teriyaki sauce. Oh, yes, sir. Get the flame going there. Yes. 
Just a little bit of that. There we are. Good for Chad. Yep. Little yep. Little yep. Beautiful. Yep. Thank you. What else, Dad? Uh, soy. Just soy. a dash. Please. Nice soy. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. A little bit of garlic, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've got some uh, free crushed garlic. Yes. Uh, that much, sir? Yes. More? No. Beautiful, thank you. Ginger. And some ginger. Yes, sir. Um, ginger. Mm. Already sliced, very thick Beautiful. by you. Yes. yes, sir. Followed by the crushed macadamia nuts. How many would you like there? Just a handful. Yes. Look at this. Speed, get yes. charity. I'm going to put them in whole, the little ones, because okay. they will come up terrific. Then we'll do that. Just put a few leaves around like that. Break them up. They're absolutely magnificent. Michael, it's ready. Look it is, this. Michael. I've timed it precisely. Oh, look at that. Michael Keelan's bok choy, superbly cooked with Australian macadamia nuts. The scenery down this way is absolutely sensational. As we reach the end of the peninsula, Kangaroo Island stands before us. To get to the island, we must board the Sea Link Ferry, which makes the journey even more exciting. I can take you everywhere, places you've not seen, heights you've never been. Gossamer wings, I'll make your heart sing in a transport of delight. Just give an ideal destination, then I start a palpitation. After a little exploration, there will be a celebration. Blue touch paper and a match, simple as it seems, a recipe for dreams. Just like the fuse, there's nothing to lose, cause we both make dynamite. It's gonna be our assignation, brimming over with anticipation. Some sort of heavy activation, cause we got the inclination. To arrive together now Everything is cool, broken every rule You can afford to come on a board I'll take you everywhere Kangaroo Island, here we come Our first destination is Cape Willoughby on the western tip of the island You can afford to come on a board I'll take you everywhere What a magnificent oh, view. It is stunning. Have a look at that. Spectacular boy, boy. again. What do you reckon? I'm going to go over and look at the lighthouse. Okay. Okay. You okay. See him? All right. Okay. Bye. See him. You be careful. Yes, Dad. Okay. okay. Mickey, this is really out of the blue today. We're here at Cape Willoughby in the southeast corner of Kangaroo Island. It is the uh, southeast or the east end corner, southeast end corner of Kangaroo Island. Australia over there and Antarctica down there. I mean, we are, this, this is cutting edge stuff. You've done your geography homework, oh. haven't you? Oh, it's cold We're, too. <laughs> it is cold. We're here at Samphire, a world renowned eatery, not just only in Kangaroo Island, but also Australia. We'll be doing a lobster tart. And of course, uh, KI, famous for lobster and a special packaging of it's lobster, certainly Michael. Is. The Ferguson family have valued a lobster, so we'll be using these lobster medallions. Also, out of the shells, they make a lobster oil, and from the meat or the spiders, we'll be doing a lobster salad. Now, you know how I mentioned the East End of Kangaroo Island. We actually have with us today an East Ender. Hi, Sue. Hello, yes, boys. Sue. How are you? Now, now Sue, I'm but... not from the East End. I'm from Liverpool. Oh, you're Liverpool. Oh, okay. I live oh. in London, but I'm from Liverpool. Now, you so. came here for a holiday. I did. Love the place. Yeah, fell in love with it. Couldn't leave. And to stay. And you're here all these years after. I am, Fantastic. exactly. In this little spot at the end. Now, we're looking at a, a dish today, of course, using the lobster and the Absolutely. lobster oil. In fact, the whole lobster. Yep. So why don't you take us through what you're going to do? OK, well, first of all, what we're going to do is I'm going to make a lobster tart, which is as we have here at the restaurant. Lobster tart. Then, lobster tart. Yes, which we will mm -hmm. then drizzle with some of the lobster mm -hmm. oil. And then afterwards, we'll make a salad which will incorporate every bit of the lobster. So we'll use the whole lot. Lovely, okay? lovely accent. I know, it is. Okay. It's it's Do you play Beatles music while you're no, cooking? I mean, uh, no. yeah. I'm a bit young for that. Yeah. Oh. Not that old. Do you know, yeah. 
<laughs> he knows all the words to it, don't sure worry. He does. <laughs> love, love, be good. Okay, now come on, be serious. Now, okay, sorry, okay so sorry. into the pan, we're going to put a little bit of butter mm -hmm. to start it off. Nothing better than butter and lobster, as most people know. Yes. So we start to heat that a bit. We'll put our tart case, which we made you for already, into the oven. All we're going to do is just warm that through. Okay, so into here, we're then going to put some shallots and a little mm. bit of garlic. A lot of these uh, herbs and ingredients are from the island. They are, ah. yeah. Most of the stuff, as much as we can buy here, locally, obviously we do. And butter, like we've used some crab meat before, another shellfish, really does combine and accentuates that mm. lovely sweet, sweet. flavour of the lobster. Absolutely. Okay, so then we've got a little bit of coriander, because obviously, you know, with the lobster, you've, although you've got that sweetness, you've definitely got to impart some flavour too. So this is going to do all of that for us. Then here are the medallions, which we've taken out of the shell. And that shell we use also, you can also make your own home oil as well. Absolutely, yeah. And you, I mean, you don't just have to do lobster. Like if you've got some prawn tails or some other parts, marin around, you can use all of those mm -hmm. to make an oil. It doesn't have to be one exactly. product. Which at home, you're not always going to have enough to do it. Sure. So, okay. So now into that, the worst thing you can do with this is to overcook it. So you certainly don't want to do that. But this all the juices, dish, oh yes. yeah, but all mm. these juices are caramelising nicely at the bottom there. A little bit of salt, but not too much. Mm -hmm. That was sea salt. That was it, mold and sea mold salt from the UK, exactly. obviously. Yeah, we do use Just that. Just like no, myself. We... Okay, and then I've got some little bits, some choy sum leaves here. Mm -hmm. And they go in. And this is, you know, the best thing about this, it's all fresh. It's yeah. all really quick to assemble. And then... That's what I love okay, about. So that's just nice and wilting down. That's all it needs to do. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we just need a little bit of oyster sauce. But don't go too mad, otherwise it'll get too salty. And now we go in here. Okay, that's nicely warmed. Mm -hmm. Sue, there's only one tart. Would that go to particular the older one of, out of the two of us? Well, <laughs> certainly not me, no. that's for sure. <laughs> you can be diplomatic about that Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Okay, so now we've got the tart case, mm -hmm. which we'll pop there. We've got our lobster, which is just through, oh, but we yes. certainly don't want to go any more no. and overcook it. Oh, that's another no, another patron ring up. Oh, another recipe. booking, no, another booking. Tell them we're full, Meg. But I do need that oil now, Mike. And there's the finished finale. There she is, lobster tart. Michael, what a fantastic view. It's spectacular, isn't it? Hey, let's sit down and await the arrival of our lobster tart. Oh, and here oh, it is. Okay. So looky, looky. It has, it has lasted, hasn't it? It has. Look at that. You can see the um, oil there. That the lovely the lobster, lobster oil. oil. Yeah. Now, what are we having with it? Well, so, it, we, we need to do something with the rest of the lobster, so we've used most of it there. So we'll just, like the tart, whip up a very simple salad. So we've got some nice local rocket, got some cucumber, and a bit of capsicum, which again will pick out the sweetness in the lobster. Uh -huh. And we'll put in our lobster. Oh, look at that. That's the nice meat from... and chunky, all from the legs. And then to go with the lobster, another really sexy product like lobster, oh. truffle oil. Oh. Oh. Two of the best products wow. together. A no. bit of sea salt. Sea salt, molten sea yes. salt, always. That's, that's the only English thing. That's the only English ingredient we use, Michael, isn't and, it? And the author. And the author. <laughs> and the author. And the author. Creator. Creator. Look at this. OK, so there we are. Yeah. See? Two-minute salad. Look, look, Again, look. the simplicity of it. Oh. Exactly. Oh. So don't overcomplicate food. Little... You don't need yeah. to. No, Simple, fresh product. That's all you need. It's ladies before gentlemen. So did you yes, want to have a little, okay. little sample? Hello. I'd love to. Hi, Emma. Oh, hey. Emma How... would like to sample. Yes, yeah. I would. How was the lighthouse? Fantastic. But I knew <laughs> while I was up there, you two weren't with me, so you had to be finding the food. Well, look oh, at these. And here they are. We were just doing mm. some research, Emma. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, Emma, you can go first. Go so try Thank it out. you. Look at that. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Well, well, here we go. Sue. Cheers, mm. guys. Thanks for Cheers, coming. Cheers, Sue. <laughs>
On our way back from Cape Willoughby, we stop at a fantastic trout farm run by Rob Howard. The clean, fresh water on Kangaroo Island is perfect for farming the species. Thanks to Rob's generosity, we're going to be cooking up some mighty fine trout tonight. It would be really nice to cook the trout in a honey glaze. So we send Emma off to find some local bees. Betty, tell me about these bees you've got out here. These bees we have on Kangaroo Island are very, very special because of the pure Ligurian strain. They were originally from Italy and they were very famous in the days of the Roman Empire for their docility and their productivity. They were brought to South Australia and released onto Kangaroo Island in order to maintain a pure strain for future generations. And it has been very, very important for conservation because in Europe now there are no longer any pure Ligurian bees due to hybridisation with other strains of bees. That's fantastic. So not only I'm getting pure honey from Ligurian bees which are nowhere else, they're docile bees, which is good for me because I've never done this before. <laughs> Mickey, Kangoo Island produces this wonderful rainbow trout. Well, rainbow trout is a freshwater fish, so mm -hmm. you've got to introduce some flavour so it enhances that lovely mm. subtle flavour. So what we're going to do with this fish, we're actually going to poach this fish in some uh, homemade chicken stock with some orange juice, a bit of cognac and mirum on a bed of coriander. Okay. And then from all the juices that the fish is going to release, plus the combination of all those flavours, we're going to reduce that and make a wonderful sauce oh, to pour right. on top. Mickey, there's the reserve liquid that we use by poaching the trout in. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to add a dab of butter into that. Right. We're going to put in the, uh, the spring onions that you chopped up. Mm -hmm. And also, the actually, you did this very finely, all, all the yeah. orange zest. Now, how much chilli are you going to uh, Just oh, a that, little. I know you love your chilli. You got a little bit of chilli. The seeds and all. And, hey, Mickey, how about some honey? Now, earlier today, Emma went out to the honey farm. Actually, it's called Hogs Bay. Oh. Apiary. Apiary, that's right. And uh, she went all oh, amongst the bees out. Now, I thought she was very brave, but we've, we've come back with this wonderful honey. And we're going to whisk all this up, and then we're going to pour on top of the trout. And the sauce is complimentary because it's the juices of the fish, and it's all those lovely flavours that combine. Trout, kangaroo island. Kangaroo Island is famous for King George Whiting, and today we're going out with a couple of brothers. They operate a very successful civil construction company back in Adelaide. David and Andrew McMahon love it here on Kangaroo Island. Any chance they get, they head off for their favourite fishing spots off Stokes Bay. And it's not long before we are reeling them in. Holy dolly! Hey, look at that. Beautiful. I want to know who's got this rich fishing background, this tradition of fishing. It's a Greek custom to it's allow the, the, to the fishermen. No, 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 it's a Greek custom to allow the guests to catch the first fish. You know, it's a cultural thing. Even if you're not catching fish like Michael Angelakis, it's a pleasure just to tour up and down the rugged coastline. Mickey, King George Whitey from Kangaroo Island is world famous. I know, and today we're at the Kangaroo Island Lodge, and that is their signature dish. They, they catch the whiting just out the front, yep. or anywhere around the island, and today this, this is a very traditional it's southern Australian way of cooking whiting. So we've got plain flour here, and we're going to season it with black cracked pepper mm -hmm. and sea salt. Okay. And uh, we've got, uh, we're going to cook this in in olive oil, which uh, I'll return. So if you want to, okay. I'll put the pan on. If you want to dust right. those two fillets, just coat them evenly. Have a look at the size of the fillet. I mean, that is, it is a meal on its own, it is. isn't it? It's a magnificent Just one fillet, fish. it is beautiful. And we've also taken off the wings and we've taken the pin bone out. I didn't know they flew. It's just it's one of the, uh, one. Put him in there like that. Sure. Yes. Now, does it matter which way up it goes? No, we can put one the other way up if you like as well. This fish will probably take about two and a half to three minutes cooked, depending on your uh, heat source. 
Now, Mike was about 30 seconds away from taking the beautiful whiting out of the pan. I just thought I'd show you what I've been getting out of the garden here. These are beautiful alien flowers. It's the, the chai family or, or onion family. Fantastic little flowers to decorate the plate with uh, fig leaves. Of course, they're uh, growing out the back of the Kangaroo Island Lodge. Uh, a bit of carrot shredded and capsicum, just a little bit of colour. And that's really simply all you need for the base to put whiting on. Whiting is a very simple, very delicate taste, mm -hmm. tasting fish. Betty? So that, that was about, about the, the three minutes that we predicted. And there's the King George whiting. Great fishing over here on the island. And of course, uh, we'll show you some wonderful recipes as we go on through different series of Out of the Blue. But thanks for joining us today. And we'll be back next week when we search for more things that come out of the blue.